Hey kids, welcome back to our final virtual Sunday school lesson. Um, I can't believe we got here, but summer is coming. And so our Sunday school uh, would normally be uh, wrapping up uh, now anyway. And uh, so we will be uh, done with our virtual Sunday school. And we just want you guys to get out there and enjoy the summer. And hopefully we'll be back together again in church, in classrooms, uh, seeing your smiling faces in the fall. Um, so I'm sorry about last week, about missing. Uh, we weren't able to do a taping last week, but we are going to end with a great story of finishing up our story of Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. So yes, we are still in the wilderness. Um, so this is our last, last um, story about the wilderness. Um, so it's been really great uh, to bring you these stories and to enjoy the felt board. Um, there's nothing like a good felt board. So uh, I hope you guys have been loving them. Um, I know I'm enjoying uh, doing this for you. So uh, we're gonna get into the story in just a minute, but we have two activities first. So we're gonna end with some, a little bit of fun activity um, since it's our last one. All right, so I want you guys to think a little bit. Uh, we're gonna do a little game called Now and Then, okay? So I want you to think back to what you ate for breakfast yesterday, okay? Do you remember what you ate for breakfast yesterday? I think I know. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure I had a blueberry bagel. All right, so think about that. Think of how many hours that you slept last night. Do you keep track of that? I probably slept probably a good eight, good solid eight hours, all right? And think of the last three people that you talked to, whether it was this morning or yesterday. Uh, what are the last three people that you talked to? Do you remember that? I think mine was Scott Stelzer my wife, and uh, probably my daughters, um, yeah. And uh, so pretty easy to remember, all right? So do you remember yours? Do you remember the breakfast from yesterday and how much you slept last night and how many people, or who the last three people were that you talked to uh, today or yesterday? All right, now, I want you to try to remember what you ate for breakfast last year this day. So what, whatever you know you ate for breakfast last year on this exact same day. So what do you think? It's Sunday morning, what, what did you have for breakfast last year? A little tougher, right? Uh, what about, what, how did you sleep last year on, that, on the night before today? Whew, I don't think I remember that. Um, I would just be guessing. I sleep pretty regularly about eight hours. Um, and who were the last three people you talked to a year ago on this day. <laughs> that is impossible. There's, there's no way that I would remember that. All right. So now you remembered some of these events pretty easily. Why was it hard to remember the events from a long time ago? Today's Bible story is about some important events the Israelites had a lot of trouble remembering. Uh, if you remember the stories from a couple weeks ago, and as the weeks have gone on, we have seen that the Israelites kept forgetting things. They kept forgetting that God brought them out of Egypt. They kept forgetting that God took care of them in the wilderness and he provided them manna and water. And, and um, they kept forgetting that they should only worship him and not have any false gods. And uh, so the Israelites are pretty forgetful. Um, so it's, you can see that we, we kind of were human um, and we forget things as well. So we're going to see in today's story that that is, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes the case. Now, I have another little fun activity for you, and we're going to use the felt board. Now, I am going to show you a picture that I put together on the felt board, and I want you to study it. Okay, I want you to really look at the picture. Take a few seconds and stare at this picture that I'm going to put up here, okay? And I'm going to ask you a few questions about some things that you have seen, all right? So I'm only going to give you a little bit of time to stare at it. So really look for details, study the picture, and then I'm going to take your picture, the picture away and ask you questions and see what you can remember on it, okay? All right, it's a good challenge. Are you ready? So here is the picture. All right, so just take a few moments. I'm gonna to count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. Now, let's see how well you studied that picture 
and give or take 20 seconds. I think I gave you a little longer than 20 seconds, but all right. So if you remember, there was three ladies standing in the room with the king, okay? The one in the middle out of the three ladies, what color was her dress? Do you remember? So there's three ladies standing in the middle. And what color was her dress? If you said blue, you are correct. Her dress was blue. Okay. Now, the king was holding something in his hand. It was a little unusual. I put a few things in the picture that would be unusual that would stand out. So, what was the king holding in his hand? I'm not sure why you would even be holding it, but that's what made the picture fun. Do you remember what he was holding? He was holding a sailboat. Yes, he had a little toy sailboat in his hand. <laughs> so, that was just to throw you off a little bit. Now, let's go back to the three ladies. One of the ladies, the one wearing pink, okay? You remember the one wearing pink? She was holding something in her hand, okay? This is gonna be a two-part question. What was she holding in her hand? Yes, if you said a book, that is correct. Now, part two, was the book opened or was the book closed? Do you remember? It's getting a little tougher. The book was opened. All right, so good job. Now, we got two more, two more for you. There was something unusual in the picture that wouldn't have made sense for that time period, okay? Because they, uh, the three ladies, you know, um, were visiting the king, you know, they were in the palace, and um, there was something beside the one lady that wouldn't have made sense. They wouldn't have had those um, back in, in, the, in the Bible times. What was the thing that should not have been there? Yes, it was a baby carriage. Do you remember what color the baby carriage was? It's getting tougher. The baby carriage was blue, all right? The blue baby carriage. Now, last one, there was a window in the uh, picture and there was something sitting in the window. Do you remember what was sitting in the window? It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. And it was actually two of them, if you looked close enough. There were two cats, two cats, a mommy cat and a little baby cat sitting in the window. All right, so I'm gonna show you the picture again just to see what you might have missed, all right? So we got the lady in blue. We have the king holding a sailboat. We have the lady in pink holding an open book. We have a blue baby carriage, which would not have been in Bible times. And we have two beautiful cats sitting in the window. All right, so that was a pretty fun game. All right, so again, that was a game about memory and about remembering. So sometimes it's hard to remember. In our Bible story today, we will hear that God wanted the Israelites to remember one truth. So all the other things that they had been forgetting, he said, just remember this one truth. And it is, the Lord alone is God. There is no other God besides him. All right, so let's go into our story. And we're gonna see how things finish up with the Israelites. All right, so if you remember, we had good old Moses in the wilderness, waiting for that promised land. Okay, they're getting close. So Moses and the Israelites had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Today's story is called Worship Only God, and it can be found in Deuteronomy 1, 3, 23, and 4, verse 40. Okay, if you want to follow along, Deuteronomy 1. Some of the other people were remembered every year. They had been children when Moses led the people out of Egypt. So there were some people that did remember. And they were there for all 40 years and they had and they did remember and they, they kept God true to the heart. There were some people that didn't and they would forget all the time. So the older people remembered better. Some of the younger people were just babies or kids when, when they left Egypt. And so they had kind of grown up in the wilderness and they only knew from what their parents and grandparents had told them. Okay, so Moses led the people out of Egypt away from Pharaoh and slavery. Some of the young people had been born in the wilderness. Can you imagine being born in the wilderness? You didn't have a hospital or you know, anywhere of real comfort, just a, you know, a little tent city, um, and uh, eating manna, eating bread, knowing only bread and, and, uh, and water for a good portion of your life. So um, they had heard the stories from their parents and grandparents about the things that God did to help his people. 
Now the Israelites were at the edge of the promised land, okay? This is the land that God had promised them. And I put one here together for you. Now this is just an artist's rendition of maybe what a promised land would look like. All right, just kind of threw that together. I figured there'd be lots of pretty trees, uh, nice places to live, a little, uh, you know, a little, little house in the country maybe. Uh, we got the big city here. Um, we got a well, we got water, lots of green grass and plants and everything. So this would be a really great place to live, all right? Again, just an artist's rendition. I don't know if this is what, <laughs> what it would have looked like. Um, but I just figured well, it would be a nice place to live and they would be excited about it and it would be called the Promised Land. All right. So they were on the edge of going into this Promised Land. So they were so close to finally being in the land that God had promised. And the Promised Land would be their new home. But before they entered the land, Moses, who was now very, very old, okay, Moses is on, towards the end of his life, he gave the people a message. He told the Israelites everything God had commanded him to say. Because you remember, God was always telling Moses things and telling him what to tell the people. And then, every, and then towards the end, God was talking to the people himself. Remember when the mountain shook and the, 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 the fire and the smoke and all that, and the trumpet sounding, that was God directly talking to the people. But again, he gave Moses a message. And so Moses is, Moses is reminding the people that God has a plan for them, that he's going to stick to his plan, and he's going to keep his promises, and the promised land is right around the corner. Okay. So he told them, uh, he reminded the people why they were in the wilderness. Many years ago, God told us to enter the promised land. Moses said, this is the land God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to us, their future families. Twelve spies went into the land, so they sent people, okay, to go into the land and kind of spy on, um, what this land would be like for them. But, and they saw, well, they saw the land was good. They saw that it was a beautiful place to live. It'd be perfect for them, okay? And they were excited about it. But some of the people refused to go in because they were afraid of the people who lived there. So there were some scary people that lived here and were kind of enjoying this land because it was such a great land. And some of the people were big, like giants, and they were uh, angry, and some of them were aggressive. and and kind of scary. And the people were again having trouble trusting God that he was gonna get them through this and gonna protect them and this land will be theirs. All right. So this is the land that he promised all of us. So when the 12 spies went into the land, they saw it was good. People refused to go because they were scared. Moses said, God had brought us the, so far. He had brought us here so far, and but the people still refused to trust him. So God said that everyone who chose to disobey him would not enter the promised land, not even me. Okay, so Moses knew that he was never ever gonna get to be in the promised land. It was only gonna be for the next generation. Okay, it was gonna be for uh, Caleb uh, was chosen and Joshua was chosen, chosen to take on the leadership of the Israelites. So not even Moses after all this time was gonna see the promised land. He was gonna see even better, he was gonna see heaven. But he did tell the people, hey, you are going to see this. You have to trust God. He will take care of the scary people that live there, and it will be your land. All right. So we wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Babies were born. So babies were born in the wilderness. They grew up in the wilderness. They'd be little kids. They grew up to be young men. And then eventually they grew up to be part of the Israelites. And that's, that's him here, see, all blue. That's the guy all grown up, okay? And they spent all this time, their, almost their whole lives. Um, they grew up to be adults and the people who had chosen to disobey God, they, they passed away. So there were some people that didn't make it. Um, they sinned or they just got older and um, they, they outlived their time in the wilderness. And some of them got punished for their sins that they were doing, the worshiping the, the, the golden calf and all those things. And uh, so some of them didn't make it. Now it is time for God's people to enter the promised land. So they're finally here. Moses explained, I begged God to let me go into the promised land, but he said no. God told me to make Joshua your leader and he will lead you into the land. And Moses was okay with this because he knew 
that God's promise was good. He knew that God was good and his plan was good. So Moses was okay. He was content. He was an old man at this time. He was content to go home to heaven um, and not get to see the promised land um, come to fruition. Since Moses was old, he wanted to remind the Israelites of God's commands. So he brought out the Ten Commandments again. And he wanted to remind them. Follow these commands when you live in the Promised Land, Moses said. Don't forget them, and don't forget what the Lord has done. Teach these things to your children and your grandchildren all the way down to the next generation. Then Moses warned them, be careful. Do not make an idol for yourselves, okay? Learn from your mistakes. Do not worship things that you created, like the golden calf they made. And do not worship things that God has created. So like you might see a beautiful tree and be like, hey, God made that, I'm gonna worship that tree. No, you don't worship the tree, you worship the God that created it. Worship only God. If you do not do what is right, God will scatter you to other lands. So there was still a threat that they would not stay at the promised land, that if they, if they didn't listen, they would be scattered uh, to other lands. But he kept the promise, he will never leave you though. So even though you might sin and make a mistake and get scattered, God will still be with you. He never leaves his people. And when we accept Jesus into our heart, he never leaves us. We always have Jesus. We always have God and the Holy Spirit. So if you look for God, you will find him. He will not destroy you. He will not forget his promise. Your God is a compassionate God. And that's what people need to remember, that even though sometimes we have to get punished because we sin, God is still a compassionate God. He's a loving God, and um, he, he loves us above all else. So Moses told the people to remember all the things that God had done, all the wonderful things he created in the world. If you just looked around, you could see the trees, the mountains, the sky, the flowers, the people. He created all of those things, and he's reminding them to remember that. He created the world, Moses said, and know this, the Lord alone is God, and there is no other besides him. And Moses said it again. So he keeps reiterating who God is. The Lord alone is God in heaven and above and on earth below. There is no other besides him. Obey his commands so that you may live long in the land that Lord, the Lord is giving you. So God is, 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 is the Lord and ruler of all heaven and earth, sky and sea. All right, guys, so we're gonna end with that story. Um, it is an amazing um, story about how patient God is, how loving he is and compassionate, and that he kept his promise to the Israelites. They're finally, finally getting out of the wilderness. All right, now, so we'll uh, finish our time together with a few questions to see if you're paying attention to the story. So number one, how many years had Moses and the Israelites wandered in the wilderness? I said it a couple times, it was a long time. It's almost as old, it's well, yeah, I mean, I'm 45, all right? So it's almost as my whole lifetime. Uh, I can't imagine, you know, five years away from being in the wilderness the entire time. Um, it was 40 years, so 40 years. So if that was me, I, you know, I'm really bad at math. I was gonna say I'd be five, but no, that wouldn't make sense. I wouldn't have been born yet. <laughs> I think I got that math right. Don't judge me, parents. I'm horrible at math. All right, number two. What did the people do after the 12 spies went into the promised land? So the spies went in, they saw the land was good, they saw some big scary people, and what did the people do? They refused to go in. So again, they're having trouble trusting. They were afraid of the people who lived there. Number three, what are some of the commands the people did not follow? So what were some of the things that they didn't follow that, that Moses had to remind them of? He said, do not make idols for yourself, which they did with the golden calf. Do not worship things that you have created. They, they, of course, they created the golden calf. And do not worship things that God has created. 
No, don't go worship a tree or a bush. Worship God. Okay, that was the Deuteronomy 5. Number four, what would happen to the people if they did not do what was right? What was the warning that God told Moses to tell the people? God would scatter them to other lands. So they wouldn't get to stay in the promised land. They'd have to be scattered. But he would stay with them always. Who can keep God's law? This is our big picture question. No one can keep God's law perfectly except for Jesus. All right. So let me look at our big picture question here real quick. Our big picture question is, who can keep God's law? Now, in today's story, Moses reminded the people that even though God delivered his people from slavery and took care of them in the wilderness, they still did not trust him. They still did not obey him and go into the land he promised them. They still did not believe that he is strong enough to keep his promises. They were sinners, and frankly, so are we. So who can keep God's law? No one can keep God's law perfectly except Jesus. In the wilderness, people got older and died. The kids became adults. And through Moses, God reminded this new generation of his law. He told them how important it was, but they were still unable to keep it perfectly. All of us are unable to keep God's law perfectly, too. We needed Jesus to come and keep it perfectly for us. And we still need Jesus today. Um, now, when you guys come back in the fall into Sunday school class, you'll be hearing more about Jesus. And you'll be hearing more about how he came to die for our sins and how he rescued us from our own wilderness. Um, and continues to do so. So Jesus is the way out, um, and he is the answer. So you will hear more about that. I can't wait to see you guys in the fall. We need to be together. We're meant to be together. We're created to be together. And uh, But I am so happy that I could bring these virtual um, uh, lessons to you. I hope you enjoy them. I can't wait to see you guys and your happy, smiley faces. So go out, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the summer. I love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye.